see people trickling in. Here we go. Hey, hello, people. Welcome to Farpoint, if it hasn't been already said. And you have found the Doctor Who panel. And there's only two of us, so I don't think we're actually doing any official moderation. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself first? Um, I am Kathleen O'Shea David. Um, I am notorious for giving puppets to uh, Doctor Who actors and made some good friendships out of that. Um, I also wrote a short story in the Big Finish uh, Qualities of Leadership uh, anthology um, and have been a Doctor Who fan since the 70s. And I'm Jennifer Povey, I'm an author and I have been, I am a second generation genuinely British Doctor Who fan, which I think is why Farpoint always puts me on this panel. And it's in the chat too, but if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A window. And if you like a question, you can thumbs up it and that moves it to the top. So, so why don't we start with um, the previous season and the New Year's because there's no spoilers on those. They've been out long enough. So um, what was your favorite episode out of the out of the set? Oh, that's a, that's actually a tough one. I am a really, really tough on favorite episodes. Episodes I did, I liked the special, but I always have a weakness for the Daleks. There goes your dog walking in front of the TV. Hmm? I say, there goes your dog walking in front of the TV. Walk right in front of him. Pop, 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 pop. Um, I, yeah, I, I liked, um, how the season kind of fit together, even though there was a, not an arc as such, like they've done previously where it's hard arc, hard arc, hard arc, um, that it was, it was more a leisurely, uh, uh, run through with the exception of uh, uh, the master. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that really speaks to Chibnall's style as opposed to Moffat's style. Moffat was very heavy on wanting to have everything be an arc, and I think Chibnall is less keen on arcs. It's a rip through the time continuum. Clearly, the next adventure involves a dog. Well, I would very, I would be very glad, happy if they could sort the rights out to have a certain dog come back. Um, that's just a question of whether they're willing to pay the fee. And I know, I know, and he's expensive, I know, but I have, I have many fond memories of our old friend K9, and of arguing whether he's a companion or a prop. I consider him a companion. Well, for for those for those who are who are listening who who don't know it, um, when you invent something in uh, uh, British script writing, this goes for for all the shows, but especially for Doctor Who. Uh, unlike the American, where the studio owns what you create, the individual creator owns what they've created. In other words, you know the Daleks are, oh God, Terry, which? Terry, Terry Nation. Terry Nation, I thought it was Terry Nation. You know, and so sometimes that's why you see uh, new characters and sometimes you see old characters. Usually there's some deal worked out with the creator uh, in terms of uh, monies that they will get for 
their characters to be back on um, the uh, the show. Uh, and the contract on that is long and convoluted as to uh, what your rights are. And it can be particularly complicated if the original person dies. Because then you're dealing with the estate, which is a whole other pain in the tookie. And part of it is because in Europe in general, including the UK, you aren't allowed to sign over your moral rights, which means that you're not allowed to give up credit. So that's a huge part of how it ends up working like that. So every time they use the Daleks, they have to pay pay Terry Nation's estate a certain amount of money. But they have a good deal on the Daleks, which is why you see them a lot. Yeah. The Daleks and the Cybermen both, um, uh, they got a good deal on. There are a couple others, and I'm not going to say which because I don't want to get anybody in trouble, that you probably would like to see again, but they're having problems um, with the rights to the characters themselves. And of course, in some cases, you've also got the complexity of needing to recast somebody because the actor is retired, dead or busy. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who did who voiced K-9. Do you remember who voiced K-9? Not off the top. I, I met him. I've had dinner with him. <laughs> I can't remember his name. John, uh, John, um, John Leeson? No. We can always take advantage of the fact that we are at home and could look. John Leeson already, somebody already said it. Ah, okay. Hey, I got it before they wrote it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, say so we have the advantage of being virtual is that when we don't remember an actor's name, we can just look it up. Yes. Um, I'm going to move this. So. But yeah, it wasn't much, wasn't much of an arc. I do think the writing has improved from the first season. I, I felt that he brought a few too many new people on at once. Mm -hmm. And then had to sort them out. Um, th th this is, I think, one of the first cases, though, that rather than the first couple scripts being sort of generic Doctor Who, because you didn't know who the actor was, that Chibnall went in knowing that he had Jody, so he was able to. So the beginning of the previous season was a little different because he already knew who he had. It was just a matter of figuring out exactly what the voice was. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I felt that it was. I felt it was pretty strong out of the gate, but I understand some of the criticisms of a couple of the mid-season episodes, maybe mm -hmm. being a little. And I do think it was more consistent this season. I think people had actually kind of gotten more into the swing of things. Yeah, yeah. And also, again, it's, um, you can, you can know who you're writing for. Um, uh, I mean, my husband does this with comic book artists all the time, is that when he writes a script for a, a specific comic book artist, he knows he's, he's working with, that he's worked with before. He always writes that script to their strengths, because yeah. then their art looks the best it can be. It's the same thing in script writing is you want to make the actors look good. So once you know what their strengths are, that's what you play to in the scripts. So. And somebody in the Q&A wants to open the can of worms. Yes, so yes, it is. Worms, the big can of worms is Tanner's children. Yeah, no, but but uh, but yeah, this is Jody's last season. She said so. Okay. I thought it, I mean, I thought it was still at the unfounded rumor stage, but three seasons is average. Yes, for a doctor, three seasons is average. A, if she continues in the other season, there's got to be something that changes her mind uh, right. within the scripts. But right now, uh, everything I've heard, and I know that a lot of it's rumor mill and all, all the rest, uh, says that she's going to probably just, she's going to bow out after this. Well, it's a very intense and difficult role. I would definitely forgive her for bowing out. Yeah. Well, it's, that's probably, I think, why most go three. And, uh, you know, because it, it, once you are the doctor, your privacy is over. You know, you, you are, you are, you have a spotlight on you. 
and everybody's second guessing everything you do as the doctor. And I have to say the fans have not been the kindest to Jody. And no, that upsets I mean, me I, greatly. I have absolute support for Jody. I think she's done an awesome job. She is one. I mean, I there were no there were no doctors I dislike, but she is definitely pretty she has definitely done a really good job. But the other reason it tends to be a short tenure is all of that running and scrambling and climbing. They don't have stunt doubles for that. And we broke both Matt Smith and Krita Capaldi with running. Yeah. They, they both blew out their knees in exactly the same way in those running sequences. So that's the other reason it tends to be a shorter tenure is it's physically very, dim even though the seasons are short, it's physically very, a very demanding role. Yeah. And I, um, I cannot confirm this one, but again, through my rumor mill, which is a little uh, in a sort of different section of the world, uh, I think she did something to her back uh, during the uh, Christmas special, New Year's special, whatever the yeah, hell it was. Yeah. Um, so and, yeah, that's the other reason. And I mean, the other thing with the doctor is you can do it for three seasons, quit. And then, but anytime you want to do it again, you can just call it Big Finish. Oh yeah, they're more than happy to do it. And so, so I mean, it's like, you never really, really you, you may do the show for a relatively short period of time, but you can always come back to that role. You've always got, or not. Yeah. Christopher Eccleston had many, many issues that I'm very glad he came forward about, by the way. Yeah, he, he was he was very brave in doing that because that's like that's like something that is not talked about. And um he took he took a stand and said, Okay, kids, this is what happened. Um and uh he is he is a scholar and a gentleman. Um anyhow he loves the puppet I gave him. And I think that it was particularly important to have a man cis gender man come forward about eating disorders because i think that is very helpful to boys with eating disorders exactly because it's, it's not so it's just often seen as a purely female exactly problem, and it's exactly. not yeah you know and who, who knows he may he may go the big finish route um i do know he's having fun he's he's finding meeting the fans in america which he avoided for a while he wasn't sure about it but he says he, he found meeting fans in america very cathartic that it helped him mentally to have people come up but not just talk about doctor who but talk about his whole you know other things they liked him in and thought he was magnificent in you know I mean, that I they would... wouldn't just talk doctor who they would talk chris eccleston the actor I mean, I would like to see him come back and do some big finish, but that's entirely up to him and whether he, when and if he feels ready and comfortable to do so. But I would certainly, you know. And uh, thoughts on who the next doctor will be? The obvious segue. Um, Oh, well, the rumor mill has gone all over the place. Uh, the favorite, my favorite currently in terms of, ooh, I would watch that, is um, uh, Michael Sheen. But because of Prodigal Son, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, uh, but I think he would be, I think he would, he would be a, a really, really good, good doctor. I wouldn't mind if they went... Um, you know, to one of the younger, younger folk, um, the up and comings, so that we have somebody, you know, that might have a few things under their belt, but they can um, feel the doctor out as their own. I mean, I do think it's very important when you start speculating about the next doctor to actually IMDB the person you're thinking of and look how busy they are, because there was so much buzz about Phoebe Waller-Bridges and I looked at what she was doing and I was like, She's not going to quit that to be the doctor. Mm -hmm. She was writing her own show. Exactly. Now, I like an actor who was brought up last time this was around, which is Richard Ayoade. I think he had he has potential. 
you will probably hear Chris Marshall. This comes from one guy at the Express who loves Chris Marshall and has been campaigning for him to be the doctor for years. I would not object to Chris Marshall, but I honestly, I do not, I think that it would come over as a capitulation right now to go back to a white man. I would rather see another woman or a person of color. Yeah. Because well, they're moving, they're moving it forward slowly and we can, we can, you know, and at this point, moving it faster is not necessarily a bad thing. I, I think moving it faster is the best thing because I think going with Chris Marshall or any other right guy is going to look like, look like they're capitulating to the right wing fans. Mm -hmm. Now, my particular saltiness is my first choice to follow Jodie Whittaker was in fact Sasha Dowan. And then they went and cast him as the master. Yeah. I am both pleased by this because he was brilliant and annoyed by this because I really wanted him as the doctor. So. I don't know, they, they played away with faces before. Can you imagine if the doctor comes back and it is him and he's like, I'm not the master, I'm the doctor. That would be, I mean, that would be funny, but I don't, in my, I do not think we have seen the last of Darren as the master. Yeah. Uh, person. The new companion, the I'm, actor. No, I'm no, I'm looking at the chat. Somebody suggested Alexander Siddig. I'm a British fan. I am very hardcore on the doctor should be British. Sorry. It can be any kind of British, but. What if it was an Australian? Was he Australian? Maybe. Is he British? Then maybe. Then maybe. Yeah. Wouldn't, I would not be upset by that. Uh, Jennifer, there's a question yeah. in the Q&A for you. Yes, there is. I cannot tell you much about him. I have not lived in the U. I have lived in the US for over 20 years. So my familiarity with British actors has has dropped. He's a comedian. So he's primarily a comic talent. But I do not know. I do not know much about about John Bishop. I it looks to me like they were picking somebody to step into the narrative role held by Graham. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think they want, I think they wanted to keep Bradley Walsh a little longer, but he just could not do full time lead on a show and host a game show. It was just not working. Yeah. It was well, just. Well, yeah, and it, you have to also, I hate to say this, but you have to consider his age. You know, he's got plenty of energy and all the rest. I'm not saying that, but. Uh, game shows are actually probably harder oh, than straight drama. Well, what I, the rumor I heard was that the produce, producer of his game show was starting to get pissed off. Probably because he was getting called in for reshoots and all the rest. Right. That's the rumor I heard and that that was part of it. But I just think it was just, it just proved to be an unworkable schedule. And yeah, you're, as you get older, you don't have as... But no, I'm sorry, I can't give you that much information about John Bishop. I had to look. I had to look him up myself. I wish I could give you more help, but. I almost went to Lambda. Instead, I went to Yale. Uh... Are the Doctor Who comics getting a bit bland? Um, they tried something. I don't know if it worked in its entirety. Uh, it was an interesting idea to try to cross so many platforms with it. Um, parts of it worked, parts of it didn't work. And I think once all is said and done, um, I hope they don't do it again. <laughs> I haven't been reading those comments, so I can't weigh in on that. Um, let's see what else. So, do we want to, do we want to address the elephant? Which elephant? There's several. Timeless children. What? The timeless children elephant. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually willing to give it another season to figure out what was going on because it would that was like a drop. It was like a bomb 
and it's like the bomb started to explode and then all of a sudden it froze in time right and we're still waiting for the rest of it you know to yeah. to expand which he which Chibnall clearly didn't want to address it in the special so i'm assuming that we will start seeing the now my feeling on timeless children is i'm watching that thing where the master's showing showing 13 all of that stuff in the matrix and flashing back to deadly assassin where we saw the master manipulate the matrix to manipulate the doctor i'm like yeah, why are you what... believing this without the, what the doctor should be doing is looking for other evidence because why are you believing stuff that the master shown you in the matrix when we know that the master is really good at hacking the matrix or running it at this point we don't know it, it, exactly we know that the ma with no competition the master can make the matrix his bit and i i am not 100 percent convinced that it's true and the other thing is the episode isn't timeless child it's timeless children yeah that's probably not an act that's probably not a mistake so there's something i think there's more going on there than the face value of what the master of what was had. what was there yeah. and most of the people who are getting really really upset about it are believing the master and i'm like why are you believing the master i mean maybe he is telling the truth but I'm not going to assume that the master is telling the truth without any other evidence. Also, the master is never dead, even if you see the body. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's sort of like that black mold you can never get rid of. <laughs> hey, I like them. I like the master. I, I, the master is definitely my favorite villain. No, and not just my favorite Doctor Who villain, but possibly. Hi. We have an extra panelist, I see but possibly one of my favorite all-time villains in everything. Well, Eve, you can go back to, you know, Delgado, who set it all up, really. Um, even though he's been played very, very differently, there was a certain gravitas to that performance that it was the first time that you could tell the doctor had an equal. Exactly. Even, no. the, even the meddling monk who shows up in one episode and never reappears, never came over as the doctor's equal. And that was another time lord. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, the master is the, the master is the doctor's, the doctor's equal. And I will, I will confess I shipped them. I will confess it. Twice I'd forgotten. Okay. I don't remember the set, remember the other time. I do, I do, I remember. Yeah, the monk did show up twice. Um, I yeah, don't remember. I remember when the doctor disabled the monk's TARDIS and stranded, it, stranded him on Earth. Mm -hmm. That's the. And then there was the, the Tibetan Kong Pao or whatever. Yeah. And Lord disguised as a Tibetan monk. Yep. Who was the doc, supposedly one of the doctor's old academy instructors or something. Well, it seems like a lot of Time Lords. Even though, you know, the doctor says, well, you know, I, I abandoned the Time Lords and I'm the only one. A lot of people no, seem wait, to wait, wait. A lot of people seem to to thank you, Campo Ripucci. A lot of uh, a lot of Time Lords seem to be like, and eh, no, out. Um, you know. Oh, that's why I don't remember. It was in one of the lost episodes and I don't I didn't actually see it. That's why I don't remember the second appearance of the meddling monk. It was Dalek's master plan, which I have not seen. Uh, I've heard the audio. That's it. Yeah, I haven't heard the audio of it either. So that's why I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad he showed up again because he was kind of interesting. But the master is Moriarty to the doctor's homes. And who was always set up to be that. And I think, I mean, I think, I think a certain amount degree to a certain degree intentional. I think that may have been what the people creating the character were thinking of. But the master has always had that. You. So anytime the master dies, I just assume it's some kind of trick. They'll be back. Or somebody like the Time Lords will bring them back. Exactly. Sort of against their will. Um, exactly. And my my really out there theory about timeless children is a timeless child isn't the doctor, it's the master. 
Hmm. I could see because that. The thing that doesn't make sense in Timeless Children is the way the mass is the master destroying Gallifrey when that's his source of eternal life. It's a well, very you could destroy Gallifrey and throw the Matrix somewhere else. Right, true. The, the loom probably exists somewhere. Because again, we're talking time and space, and there isn't anything to say that he can't go back in time, back to the loom. Right. I mean... Okay, so are there any... There may be fans who haven't read that particular book or picked it up by osmosis who may have forgotten what the loom is. Do we need to remind people? The loom was a cool idea. Um, and I sort of wish that they had, uh, um, that it, it shows up again in some form. Um, I mean, unfortunately, we missed the best opportunity, which was that episode, the title of which I can't remember, where where Clara ends up on Gallifrey and meets the doctor when he's a kid in that kind of group home he was being raised in. Mm -hmm. That would have been a good opportunity to mention the loom and they missed it. And I think they do. I and mean, then I think they just missed, missed it. Right. I mean, they didn't wreck on the loom either. And I consider the loom canon until they say it's not. Right, right. Because oh. I just cannot, I can't see a species as sophisticated as the Time Lords dealing with natural pregnancy. Yeah, it'd be a bit of a problem. Uh, the Warlord from War Games, that's another one that probably is stuck in right uh, if they wanted to use him. Um, and uh, I, I do adore Missy. And who, Missy, Michelle Gomez was my second favorite master actor, my favorite being the original. Mm -hmm. I have a soft spot for the original and the person who actually did all the work of really establishing that character. But yeah. Michelle Gomez was definitely my second favorite. She does evil so beautifully. Oh, she does. And she so, does so much class. Yeah. Well, she she was uh, she was Lilith in uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the new one. Yeah. And and playing this this mousy school teacher, she can play anything. I mean, she's got comic chops. She's got dramatic chops. And if you ever get a chance to meet her at a convention, do it. She is amazing. I, she is I worth your time to stand in line. I would love to. I would love to meet her. I would also love to cosplay Missy, but I haven't been able to find the right suit. Ah. Uh, After the pandemic, I will have to go thrifting again and see if I can track. Oh, the Ronnie. Um. Oh, I really wish they'd bring back the Ronnie. I totally. Who, wish who owns the Ronnie? I don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back and see who wrote the wrote the first script. But on there that. were quite a few people and. I tossed it up myself before realizing from the name, there were quite a few people who thought Missy was Durrani. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I think they deliberately, they did that on purpose, but it would be interesting to see Durrani return at some point. But again, it might be tied up in rights. I think it, I think it, it's like most of the, the Time Lords we're talking about here um, are again, it's, it's like we talked about earlier, is, is it really is um, who owns what. And um, yes, I do agree. Bring back Warwick Davis's emperor. I like that character. That was a good character. And Warwick Davis is, I, I know he's kind of limited because of his size, but damn, he's a good actor. And I mean, also, the other thing I don't buy is that we've destroyed Gallifrey how many times and it never sticks. So I don't buy that, buy that either. Six. Yeah. Six. I actually counted one day because I was <laughs> I that not, damn I bored. I have not bothered to count, but yes. Yes. Yeah. Every time they destroy Gallifrey, I kind of roll my eyes because I also have the wall of Doctor Who has a you know how most of them have a canon pyramid where the actual show is at the top and then the light is merchandise and then the sort of sub light is merchandise and then everyone's head cannons at the bottom. With Doctor Who, the top of the pyramid is 
what was established in the most recent episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not wrong, am I? No, you're not, because you know that's sort of how that's sort of how that that the uh, you know that rolls. Um, because sort of like the master, if you get rid of Gallifrey, like totally, um, you lose a whole set of things that um, a whole bunch of stuff will then go out the window. Exactly. And, and the, other thing, the other issue with the way they destroyed Gallifrey and Timeless Children is, do we know that that even happened? Was that Matrix Lights too? Yeah. Was was it was it all we are? We don't know, and we can't be we can't be sure. Ah, Pip and Jane Baker own oh, Narani. Pay them. <laughs> Come on, pay them. Use the character. Yeah, I mean it wouldn't be hard to find a to find a good actor to do that. And I mean, yeah. you, I mean, the nice thing about Time Lords now is they've made it so you can cast absolutely anyone. Exactly, it exactly. Doesn't have to be a, it does, Narani doesn't have to be a woman. Narani doesn't have to be anything. You just cast whoever you think will do the best job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it um, and that's what makes it interesting, especially with the with the Time Lords, is that they have firmly established uh, their gender fluid. Yeah. And that really is kind of kind of nice, and I know has helped some people who are gender fluid feel more comfortable with themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, it did it did a that that one thing I think helped the mental health of a lot of people. And and. They did it, and they did it without a single. Tribunal did it without a single transphobic joke creeping in whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the "You're a woman, I might" was hilarious, but that wasn't. But it wasn't, you know. It was like it could have gone bad. It could have gone bad, and I think I hate to say it. I think if Moffat had done it, it would have gone bad. I think the jokes would have been cheaper. Exactly. He would have gone. He would have gone for the low-hanging fruit. Chibnall, uh, I notice, tries to avoid that and give and give something that you're not expecting, as opposed to, ah, I know this joke. So, um, a little pushback on the Doctor Female. Oh internet internet it you, uh that was i still hear i am still hearing pushback against against ritika i am still the rumors about her quitting were like everyone was like thank goodness can we go back there were a whole bunch of thank goodness can we go back to a man now yep and which makes me which makes me kind of hope they pick another woman because it will make it a lot harder for them to say oh i'm not sexist it's just the writing Right. Well, or, or a person of color, you know, right. I which mean, would, I... which would break another. Well, although technically we've already done that. Well, we have Ruth. Yeah, we have Ruth. And I like that. There are some people, people who actually want Joe Martin, but I, I liked Ruth, but she wasn't the doctor as we know the doctor, which I think was right for what we were was going on. On, and I really liked her, and I liked her TARDIS, as you can tell. Yeah. Actually, I like the way her TARDIS, I'm a fan of the old and the new, so I, I've been using her TARDIS because it's kind of both. Because it's got the round things. The round things, yes. Oh, the round things. I miss the round things. I miss the round th I don't dislike the modern steampunk TARDIS, but I liked the round things. Well, there was an interesting article in um, the Doctor Who magazine. Don't ask me what issue. I just read them through, talking about how they came to the organic look of um, uh, Jody's TARDIS. Uh, it's like an entire issue of, of props and sets and that kind of stuff, you know, talking about how they got to the point that they got. And the, the thought process, and it was really quite interesting in terms of 
thinking that the TARDIS is also in some ways a reflection of the doctor's mind. Yeah. I have absolutely held that particular head canon for the new show. The old show, they couldn't afford to keep changing the TARDIS every time they got a new doctor, but now they're doing that and that really hit. I'm glad to hear that that's actually their thinking because that was my thinking is they're making it reflect the personality of each regeneration and that's that that doctor's personal style yep the TARDIS reflects what the top the TARDIS reflects what the doctor wants the TARDIS to be yeah and apparently Capaldi's uh doctor was a fan of Mickey Mouse there is a hidden Mickey I know I've heard that no I saw it I have a picture of it uh it's at the top of the bookcases right right is is the hidden Mickey well, I, the thing I really loved about, about Capaldi, Capaldi was the way he used, was the way he brought in his talents as an actor in a way not all of them have and the guitar playing. Yeah. Because the guitar playing was, Capaldi played the guitar and he wanted to play the guitar. Yeah. And it's not like the doctor hasn't been a musician in the past. So why not have the doctor play the guitar? I want the next one to play a drum set. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, I think using the talents of the actor in that particular way, and they've always done such a good job. It's still the doctor. Yeah. There's always that. Yes, I am exactly thinking of Troughton and his recorder. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is interesting that they all of them, uh, you know, Moffat and Chibnall and RTD, you know, they all respect what has gone before right. and have put in little Easter eggs so that if you've been a fan for since 63, say, there are things in there that you go, that was for me. Yeah, and that, that was for me. And see there's an awful lot of people who reacted to timeless children with oh this is disrespectful of what's gone before and i'm like no it's not it's a continuation on it's things that go all the way all the way back i mean if you go back and you listen to um uh, uh trouton talking about gallifrey and uh you know and the trepidation he had until he absolutely had to do, he had to, um, he had to go to them, you know, says that he, he, he was worried that they were just going to suck him back in. Yeah. And he didn't want to do that. I really want to know, I mean, we know and we don't know, but I want to know what the traumatic uh event that tripped this whole thing what happened to make the first to make hartnell say f it i'm out of here i cannot take this anymore what happened on gallifrey you my know? current head canon is that it actually had to do with susan because in the episode the name of which I can't remember where Clara goes to the doctor's childhood home on Gallifrey we see a conversation between his crash parents which is what I think was going on I think it was a crash mm -hmm. he'll never make a time lord that one he'll have to join the military is and my head canon from then on was so they tried to force Susan into the military so he took her I could, I mean, I could, I could see that. Yeah. This is, this is, this is headcanon. This speculation, is yeah. It's, it's this is speculation. Yeah, it's entire speculation. But there has to be a reason he didn't just run. Why did he take Susan and why did she never go back to Yalifik? She never went back to our knowledge. Yeah. No, she didn't. Well, it was, was it the doctor who was running from something? Was it Susan who was running? Or the doctor running to keep Susan safe? Exactly. So that's my head canon is it has something to do with the strat 
it had something to do with the caste system on Gallifrey between the Time Lords and everyone else, and she wasn't making the grade and something bad was going to happen, like being drafted into the military or whatever. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But that, I mean, so that is a pure, that is pure headcanon. It is not, it is not. I love when my head cannon gets canonized, but I don't expect it to be. Yeah, you don't expect it to. I knew that there were going to be uh, uh, using the barn again um, for something because when I was on set, they were repainting it. Ah, yes. And they, you don't repaint something you're going to take down. Right. So I've, now there were, Sometimes there are things where stuff gets reused across shows. Mm -hmm. So it's not 100% thing, particularly in the BBC, because they never have a huge amount of money. So they reuse stuff a lot. Yeah. The quarry, the quarry. Yeah, well, no, but they, they said that, that they were redoing it for, for an episode. Okay. Um, you know, so what they were, what they were doing is, is they were dulling it down. Because it had been, if you consider what it was in the 50th anniversary with all the lights and all the rest, it was right. relatively bright. And what they were doing was graying it down so that when you into um, the, you know, the dark, it was darker rather than reflecting the warm wood. Right, that, that makes sense. I mean, you adjust things, that, you adjust things and you change props. We had a comment in the chat about being so somebody who was so glad they got rid of the stupid sunglasses the sonic sunglasses that Capaldi had i to. i liked it as an idea uh i think it worked really really well in extremis um having having it linked um they didn't bother me that much i mean sure we didn't have a sonic until a little while later but the the glasses didn't didn't bother me and and also it makes my life a hell of a lot easier when i'm when i'm dressed up as 12. i oh. heard that that's one of the reasons why they did it that they actually did it for cosplayers i don't know whether that's actually true but i mean i my reaction to that was i did think it was stupid but i was like this is going to last one season because there is absolutely no way they can afford the toy merchandising losses of not having a squirt sonic yeah <laughs> I mean, well, I know, yeah, because I know the, that's cynical, but they make a lot of money from selling those things, and I only have two of them. I need to get Jodie's. I've got, uh, I've got probably more than I should have. Um, I need to get. I, I am sadly limited on my Sonic screwdrivers, and I was going to get jo Jodie's, but I kept missing out on a, you know, seeing somebody buy the last one in front of me, and then the pandemic, so I haven't got around. Yeah, because I absolutely, as somebody from the industrial heartland of the UK, I loved the scene where she forged her Sonic out of Sheffield steel. Yeah. That, I related to that scene. That scene spoke to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it, you're right, because the, the, that was an interesting thing, because if you knew about the area, you understood, uh, most Americans don't know what Shepherd's, Shepherd Steel is. Yeah, I had you to know. explain it to a few. Yeah, um, I do, but my brother's a blacksmith. So, <laughs> you know, these are the kind of things you learn. Um, you know, so it, it really, um, it made it her own and it looks so different than the other ones. Again, they were going for this kind of organic, uh, I, said, I want to, to get my I want to get my own just to have one, but I just keep mi missing out, and I don't like. I guess I'll order one, but probably order myself one eventually. But I've been sort of like holding out hope that the that the crisis will end at some point. Well, I, we're all we're all hoping that um, uh, you know, because I would honestly, Jennifer, I would love to be on a panel with you, like face to face. Yeah, you know, I like being on panels with you. Yeah, especially on this topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe you know. we could speculate a little bit on what do we think about the new companion? I mean, I know we don't really have any or anything to go by, so I'm guessing that she's going to narratively fit into. 
fit into where Bradley Walsh did. I've seen a couple of complaints at, and we have 10 minutes left, of another old white guy. But we still have, have Jazz, and hopefully with only two companions, we'll actually see her used a little more. I think she's been kind of underused. And I did love this. Oh, and I loved the scene between her and Jack. And everyone was like, she's in love with the doctor. And I'm like, you hadn't noticed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I Richard, we were. Sorry. Uh, Richard Severoth said, uh, weren't the three of us on a panel together? Yes. Yes, we were. Yeah, we were. They were um, better. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind if we went down to two companions. Um, I, I'm happy with two. I like a crowded TARDIS, but I am happy with two companions. I'm yeah. very really happy with that. And as I said, I would like to see Yaz highlighted a little more because it kind of doesn't look great that they finally, finally have a South Asian companion and then they neglect her. Yeah. Like guys, and I mean, I would, every, every single Doctor Who panel when somebody asked me what does Doctor Who need next for years, it was like a South Asian companion. Now they have it, they just need to figure. It's like they built the character to the point of of where we have a pretty good idea what her moral compass is and where the strengths and weaknesses are. Now just write the character and you know and let us enjoy it. I mean, I'm also pleased, of course, that Sasha Davan and that, but it is really an, more of an issue. It's almost more of an issue getting representation for South Asian people in the UK than black people, which a lot of Americans don't understand. Um, well, it's a, it's a, not it goes back. That's a big deal. It's sort of the Brit. It's sort of an old, ver a new version of the old British class system. It is. It is very much. And I mean, I grew up in that kind of environment, and people think Islamophobia is this new thing, and I'm like. No, it's not. Yeah. But I would like to see more of her. And But I don't really have any feeling about what John Bishop is going to do. We have a first name and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Any thoughts? Um, I think here's where they could actually use Yaz because a new companion is always a fish out of water. Yaz has been there long enough that she's got basically the basics of the ropes. Yeah. So she yeah. may have to take him under her wing because sometimes the doctor totally forgets, oh, you're new, you don't know these things. Oh, you know, it's, it's sort of like, oh yeah, we do have a swimming pool. And that you know? would be an awesome dynamic, especially for the, for the teenagers, for the kids, to see a younger person, to, to, to see that an older person can learn from a younger one would mm -hmm. I think be for the true target audience, it's still a kids show, even if us old people still like it. Sure, but, you, but I think we both started watching it as kids. Oh, I was I was watching it sitting on my dad's knee. Yeah, exactly. My so dad, it's it's a show. A yeah. So it's it it isn't like we. It's like we started as children enjoying uh, enjoying the show. And now we are the Altacockers. Um, and I always like seeing new people, hi Fig, new people um, uh, finding the show, enjoying the show, you know, and, and the enthusiasm that, that they bring to it. Um, my daughter Caroline has informed me that Jody is her doctor. It's the first one that she, um, related to latched onto she liked the other she liked watching classic who she liked watching regular who it's something she did you know regularly but but having jody just kind of kicked it to another level for her well the person in chat saying it's moved past that no it it no the thing is that doctor who proves is that really really good kids program will programming will also appeal to adults and it does a very very good job of still being for kids while still caring about us older fans and the adult fans. Thus the Easter eggs. 
Exactly, exactly. And a lot of really good kids programming cares about parents. Five minutes. Yep. So, yeah, Doctor Who is at its best when it veers into horror, in my opinion. Yeah, the more kids you can get behind the sofa, you the better the episode is. The real, some of the good episodes will have adults behind the sofa. Just ask me, just ask me about the nightmares I got from Blink. Yeah, Blink, Blink. Did, a lot of people got flipped out by Blink. Well, my problem with Blink was I went out and my husband had already watched it. So I watched Blink on my own at 1 a.m. with a statue of the Virgin Mary from at somebody else's balcony place appearing through my window directly behind the television. Yes. This was on rise. This yeah. was on rise. Yeah, it it um, it really is. It really is kind of amazing that it, it can terrorize. Um, the gopolis terrified me as a kid. But I was so I was so pleased when the when the master started miniaturizing people again. That was a great Easter egg. I'm like, it mm -hmm. made me flinch because of course I've rewatched it as an adult and it doesn't bother me nearly as much. I want the dolls. I'm seriously <laughs> thinking about just creating the miniaturized um, dolls. But I mean, that that was, the master first did that in the, did that to the monks in Logopolis. Mm -hmm. Except not as, <clears throat> except the dolls weren't as nice because special effects have, <clears throat> excuse me, improved. Mm -hmm. But when, when the master started doing that again, I was like, thank you for the Easter egg because a lot of people have forgotten about the dolls. Yeah. The turning people into dolls thing. Yeah. It's actually explained in the gospel. Tissue, tissue compression. Uh, tissue compression eliminator or something like that. Yeah. But what actually scared me in the gospel is when I went back and watched it as an adult, because I actually forgot about it because I was so scared. What scared it, I discovered is it, <clears throat> it was the first time in my life that somebody told me the universe had a lifespan. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah we probably move towards wrapping up yep so what's your biggest hope for the next season i say more yas better understanding of what's going on with the timeless child and i really really want us to see if we can get gaming back to do another episode and I know he, I've heard rumors that he would like to at some point. What about you? I cannot comment on Neil Gaiman. I'm not, I'm not asking you to comment on Neil Gaiman. Well, no, he's a good friend, so. I can't comment. <laughs> he's a good, well, I loved the doctor's wife, so I'd love to see him do something else. That's yeah, I, you know, he would be game for it, uh, but uh, he's got quite a bit on his plate right now. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he does. I'm, I am sure he does. What's your biggest hope? Um, that we get individual episodes. That if you miss an episode, you don't feel so far behind that you don't think you're going to be able to catch up. Right. Fair. Fair. Um, and I would, uh, you know, I... I I'm really interested to see what the what the dynamics will be uh, with this new companion. I am I am too, and as I say, I wish I could give the attendees more information about the actor, but I really haven't I haven't seen him in anything, and I haven't had time to do what I sometimes do, which is go look for clips. Yeah, and, and see how they are. With Jodie Whittaker, I was watching. I watched a ton of her clips after she was announced. You didn't. You hadn't seen Broad. Um... I had not seen Broadchurch, so I wasn't familiar with her. Ah, see, that's that's where that's where I came in. Going, she can play the doctor. I have no issue with this because of what she did on Broadchurch. And I, I'd I seen her, I'd was... seen her do some other things as well, and it's like she's she was the total package in terms of an actress. She can do comedy. She can do yeah. drama, and she can and you could see it. You could see it within the doctors that she could turn on a dime. In other oh, words, it'd be, oh, it'd be funny, 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 funny. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa. She's you know, too soft. And I'd, uh, I just said to the people who are too far, wait until she goes, good man goes to war on somebody. And then she did on that Dalek. Mm -hmm. I told you. 
but yeah. time we, we have to we're at time ladies and gentlemen so so we so thank you for for being our audience uh i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen any last words i think we i think we have time and i was expecting that thank you everyone stay safe hopefully we will see you in person next year that's that's my other big hope or shore leave shore leave i'm not coming to shore leave i'm probably okay. shore leave is shore leave is a bit of a problem for me because it usually coincides with my husband's birthday got it okay uh, yeah i understand and that. shore leave is iffy i don't know that they're gonna be able to do in person yeah all right well i've got to go off at one o'clock and do star trek lower decks okay awesome it was good to see you again even it, though it, it was it virtually hopefully hopefully next year we'll be face to face and we can actually hang out some yes <laughs> please only seeing each other when we're on panels together and then we never actually hang out yeah no we got we gotta we gotta put some hangout time in there we do we do all right i'm gonna leave this meeting and then see if i can get to my next one <laughs> bye bye